blueprint number 10. This is the last one of our marriage series. And it's not really a wrap up. It's not a conclusion. It's not a summary. It's just a little tongue in cheek, a little humorous glimpse into if you can survive, if you can stay together and slug it out and love it out and argue and make up, if you can learn not to destroy each other's ego and feelings and keep it intact until you get into your older years when the kids are gone and grandkids come along and it's just the two of you and you, and you got something to enjoy together, then I want to give you a little optimism for what you're facing when those good golden years finally come along. We're going to do it in the form of cartoons. <laughs> you got to read the cartoon first. I'm with the ugly old hag. I'm with the impotent inchworm. That may sound crude to you, but believe it or not, when you get old in your golden years, that's actually funny. Now, if you're 40 and you say that to your spouse, you're doomed. <laughs> but I can walk into a room today and say, hey, what are you going to go eat? And she can say, I don't care. And I say, look, you did that last week, you old hag. Get in the car. And she'll say, all right, I'm not going to tell you what she'll call me. It's, it's bad. <laughs> it's not even worse no hag, but she's got her words. <laughs> and they mean nothing. It's funny. It's wisecracking. You should have seen us tonight. Carolyn was feeling sorry for my wife. Juanita, they were in there. Oh, God bless her. He's so rude. I brought my feet on that table right where Kay is. My dirty feet have been right there on that table. My wife had a cow sitting down there. Get your feet off that table. I looked over at Jim, who was sitting where Gary is, and I said, what should I do? And he said, I wouldn't take mine down now. <laughs> <laughs> so I did. I told her, they're going numb. Circulation's running out. But I can't take them down now. Because you told me to. And Jim told me to leave them up. <laughs> that might not happen exactly like that, but that's the way I remember it. It doesn't make any difference. It was still fun. It'll be funny later on. You can rest assured there won't be a fight over it. Later we go home and she said, why well, did you get your feet down? And I'll say, oh, sorry. That won't happen. <laughs> In fact, I can tell you, it's already pretty much forgotten. It won't even be a topic ever because we're in the golden years. <laughs> And you. <laughs> I, told, I told you my wife was in these cartoons. Does that not look like her? Sure. Oh. 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 Look at the hair. Look at like sunshine right there. Look like, look like my sunshine. This is actually one of our conversations. <clears throat> I, I have said to her before, what were you talking about? And she said, when? <laughs> I, I don't know, you said something about Allison's thumb or something. That was yesterday. Oh, I'm just not hearing it. And that's, that's actually the truth. So if you can just hang on, believe it or not, things that are so urgent for you to fix and resolve right now, they won't matter much. If you if you start fixing it on Monday and it's still not fixed on Friday, nobody's gonna fuss. Early this morning I got up. I had to make an errand early this morning, and then I went to uh, breakfast at uh, I don't remember six. <laughs> four, five, there's a there's a huge wreck on 1488. Not a huge wreck, but it was freaky this morning. Anybody can go down 14? Upside down car. Were, did, were you aware of it? Did y'all no, get a radio call? I didn't see that, but my friends did um, posted it on Facebook. The car flipped in the inside lane right there by the turn lane. And, and I'm wondering why all the traffic's going over, and, and finally I realized, oh, there's a wreck up there. And then when I finally get to merge over, we have to go over the turn lane and go around. There's a car upside down, a woman crawling out of it, another woman that's rear into the car next to him, a man, two women drivers, and ain't nobody cared if they're alive or dead. I pulled over on the shoulder and got out to see if at least everybody could use a cell phone or needed help or anybody was dying. And, uh, and I said, man, is everybody okay? Yeah, we're fine, we're fine. And, uh, and so, you know, we had a little nice conversation on the side of the road. I, I'll make a phone call for you 
the lady that had crawled out of the car was trying to find her purse in the car to get her phone. I said, you want to use mine? And, and then they finally assured me, the guy said, I've got them coming. And he was on 911. They're coming. I couldn't believe nobody stopped. And, uh, and then I thought, well, wait, there's no urgency here. They're, they're, they're. So I finally left and went on up to the do si -Do to eat breakfast. And I walk in, do si -Do, there's only one woman in her 40s maybe sitting over there. Nobody else in the restaurant. Two girls that wait on you and one customer. So I walked in like I do, you know, talking. And I walked in, I said, man, you know, I blew the wreck right down the street. There's a car flipped upside down down there and two other cars involved. The lady in the booth turned around and said, I know, it's just terrible. I said, you saw it? I came around it. Well, I was just fixing to comment to the girls, I can't believe nobody stopped to offer help. But I never got that far. And now a 40-year-old woman is saying, I can't believe it. I just got around it. I, got, I didn't realize it was a wreck until I got up there. And then I saw, oh my God, the car's upside down. And I thought, Lord, they're fixing to shut this road down. I'm glad I got through before they shut it down. Because <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, urgent for her to hurry up, not get to work, to get to breakfast. She wasn't going to work. And she, urgent, oh my Lord, they would have shut the road down. I'd have, I'd have been late for breakfast. And I, and I just kind of thought, good Lord. It's so urgent that you can't stop and offer a little help if it's needed. You, you got to hurry. Well, let me just tell you, in your golden years, neither you nor your spouse will be in a hurry about much. Urgency is not going to be one of your problems that you have to deal with. You, you get, I guess patience is a good word. You, 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 might, you get a lot more patient with things. And, and uh, oh, I was going to tell you the rest of that story about Dose of Dough. I'm sitting there at Dose of Dough and, and I'm on the computer working. And, uh, and, and because there's no custard, in my, bre my breakfast came almost instantly. And one of the girls came back by and said, you need uh, another cup of coffee? And I said, I do, one more cup and I'm done. And she said, what are you doing today? And I said, oh, I've got some meetings today and I've got to meet a couple I'm going to do a wedding for. They know I'm a minister in there. And I said, well, what are you doing today other than working at tables? She said, I've got to go buy a ceiling fan. My husband's going to put a ceiling fan into that. And the minute she said it, I thought, oh, my wife has wanted the ceiling fan in our dining room. Fish for how long, Craig? Long time. Yeah, five years. <laughs> my ceiling fan quit working about five years ago. My wife brought it up for the first, I don't know, eight months. We haven't talked about the ceiling fan probably in at least four years when she just quit talking about it. And then one girl walked by and said, I gotta go buy a signal man. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I was supposed to get one of those. <laughs> I ran by Lowe's and bought a ceiling fan. I had a new ceiling fan put in my dining table by 8.30. You know, like, man, I started to call my wife and tell her. And I thought, nah, I just let her see it when she comes home. Maybe she'll die of a heart attack. <laughs> oh, because we've reached our golden years. <laughs> and that's where you enjoy it. You've got to read the old woman sipping on a glass of wine while sitting on the patio with her husband. She says, I love you so much. I don't know how I could ever live without you. Her husband asked, is that you for the wine dog? <laughs> She said, it's me talking to the one. <laughs> and you know what he would say? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> Be fine. Because if you can live long enough together married, honesty is a whole lot easier and it doesn't hurt as much as it did when you were young and stupid. Uh, he'll probably just ask her what brand and buy her some more. <laughs> Make her life a little bit easier. You'll also find you, you don't need really you don't, you don't have to repeat yourself. <laughs> you don't see it. She says, how come you never say you love me anymore? And he says, I told you once, if anything changes, I'll let you know. <laughs> and that's true. That's true. My, my wife and I uh, 
several years ago, I don't remember why or when, but I had an episode, and uh, I got this, and, and I buried a bunch of people at one time, younger than me, and uh, and, and I, I got this uh, feeling that, uh, you know, I, I'm going to die, and I won't remember what my last words were to my daughters or my wife, and uh, because I buried people who, that was their, that was their angst. I wish I just said I love him or her, and, and I, and I don't I think I had eight funerals one, uh, one summer. I can't remember now, but it was a bunch in a short period of time, and and they were not, they were not, you know, the kind you expect. They weren't all just somebody, you know, finally lived out life, and it and it affected me to the extent that I I just made up my mind I, I'm not going to hang the phone up when I'm talking to my girls without saying I love you. So it doesn't matter. We just call and say, hey, you going to run and pick that up for me? Yeah, okay, I love you. And, and I know it means nothing anymore. They don't mean it when they say it. I don't mean it when I'm saying it. We're just, we're just practicing a habit now. Just say, hey, I love you. I love you. But at least, you know, one day when I die, they'll say, the last thing he said on the phone was, I love you. And, and they'll say, yeah, but he didn't mean it. He told everybody that. <laughs> I, I pretty much do anymore. And then one day we were sitting around in the living room, and one of the girls called about something, and and, and I was said, yeah, okay, whatever, blah, 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 blah. And we got through, and I said, okay, I love you too. And I, my wife said, how come you don't say that to me every time we talk on the phone? And I said, I did tell you that. I told you that a few months ago. And nothing's changed. Yeah, but you tell the girls every time. And I said, don't you? Well, yeah. Well. And I said, well, I don't recall hearing you say that to what? Well, we all start. Okay, you start first. <laughs> <laughs> so now, when my wife and I talk, now we say, I love you before we hang up. Doesn't mean anything. You say, like you said to the kids, and you say it to me. But you don't. You, you don't really feel the need to have those deep, intimate conversations. And you find that you use fewer words when you're talking to each other, but they have more meaning to them. When I speak to my wife or she speaks to me, it's not very often. We talk to each other about every third day. But when we do, it means something. It has value, it has meaning. Neither one of us. And it's because of the golden years. You get older, you realize I can die any time. I've already outlived my dad by two years, and so I don't. I don't want. I don't want. I don't want to die or my wife die, and think that the last conversation we had was strained, bitter, angry, mean, arguing, name calling, and I can tell you it won't be. It won't be because we made that choice that we're just not in that world anymore. And it's only because of how old we are. We're in the golden year. And so we don't have to say as much as we used to to get along with each other. We don't have to solve problems. We don't have to agree on anything. I don't feel the need to talk for an hour to convince her that I'm right and she votes the way I vote or whatever. It doesn't matter. She is her own person. She does what she wants to do. I have zero input into what she wants to do. I don't know if they even pay her where she works. I've never seen a check. <laughs> I'm pretty sure she gets money. I don't think she's volunteering up there. But I don't care because it's hers. It's her life. And when we talk, it's not to fight and argue over my opinion versus her opinion. <clears throat> So the older you get, the less you need to prove anything to each other. Conversations become much more meaningful. Y'all can't read these, can you? She says, she thinks, cloud balloon, she thinks. When you've been married a long time, you get to know what the other person thinks. He thinks. No, you don't. Know. <laughs> I wanted to add some really good dialogue to this, so the best I can describe this about the golden years is <laughs> okay. 
Yeah, it's just pretty much what they said. <laughs> you think you know what I'm thinking, but you don't. But you do, but you don't. I can almost guess what my wife is thinking sometimes, but I can't. But we enjoy trying. <laughs> our biggest, our biggest irritation with each other, which is not an irritation, <clears throat> it's a fun irritation. I go to her about it every single day, almost, <laughs> with a few exceptions, is where you want to eat. <laughs> oh, I don't care. Okay, let's go to Sonic. Well, not there. Okay, you care. So you do care. So where do you want to go to eat? I don't care. You just told me not Sonic. You care. Well, not Sonic. Duh. Okay. Let's go to Luby's. Mm, no, not really. So you care. Hold on. Let me let me read your mind. <laughs> Salt grass? Not really. I feel like a steak. <laughs> Can you just tell me where? Mm, I don't care. <laughs> just shot down three good suggestions. Now, believe me when I tell you, I could avoid all that. I know how to avoid all that. But why would I? It's fun. <laughs> Once in a while, when I'm just tired and don't want to play the game, like the other night, I just said, Red Lobster or Olive Garden? Those are your two picks. Pick one. Red Lobster. All right. We went to Red Lobster. I can do that all the time. It's so boring. <laughs> it's so dumb. When you're riding your car, just you already know where you're going. Just go. So, when you've been married a long time, you really do get to know what the other person thinks. No, you don't. <laughs> she says, do I look fat? He said, do I look stupid? <laughs> Neither one of them want an answer to that. And both of them know somewhere in there there's some sarcasm. But it's so subtle it's not offensive. See, when you're young, you just call people names. Hey, you look fat in that dress. Yeah, and you're not going to be married long. <laughs> or, that looks stupid. Why would you do that? Yeah, okay, you're in trouble for a while. But when you finally succeed and reach the golden years, you're... You can still be sarcastic, but nobody knows you are. <laughs> you don't really want here, Here's my favorite of all. Uh, An old wife sitting on the beach heard her husband thrashing around in the water yelling, Help, shark, help! And she just laughed. She knew that shark was going to help him. I struggle to interpret that for you, but I think you get the point. You survive long enough, signals are not interpreted personally. You don't, you're not personally offended by misunderstanding each other and not quite getting it. And uh, so we'll come, we'll, we'll, we'll get ready to wrap up here. If you love something, set it free. If it comes back, it will always be yours. If it doesn't come back, it was never yours to begin with. Have you seen possessive husbands or possessive wives? They just try to control everything their spouse does. And it's just hard to live that way. I, I would hate I would hate to live with a woman that tried to control everything I did. Tried to tell me what I eat and tried to control. And I would not be that kind of man because I wouldn't want to live with that kind of person. And so this is kind of a sweet way of phrasing that. If, if you love someone, set them free. If, if, if they come back, you know, let them go. If they choose to stay with you, then they'll always be yours. If they don't come back, they weren't yours anyway. But if it just sits in your living room, messes up your stuff, eats your food, takes your money, and doesn't realize that you had set it free, <laughs> you probably married it. <laughs>
<laughs> the best I can tell you is just enjoy the ride. <laughs> that concludes number 10, thankfully.